All right, we are recording, and I also just realized I actually... Okay, I, did. I couldn't remember if I actually copied in the uh, the data files. I'm just getting... I should have done this a little bit ago, but I was just getting some stuff taken care of for this video. Like, making sure it has the video, the folder, I mean. 1812 Overture is just starting. All right. Um, yeah, I'll start the timer going here. But, uh, let's, let's get to welding with a completely fictional device. Yes, there is arc welding, but it, it's not at range. And you also would not be welding concrete. Can I get political? I think I will anyway. Um, even if you're like, no. So something I saw, and it's like, this is depressing. So, with the whole Russia-Ukraine stuff, which is terrible, I mean, it's... But you have a lot of people doing virtue signaling stuff, and like, a lot of virtue, virtue signaling, it's just stupid, it's in some ways even degrading to people that actually know what's going on. And I don't mean that as far as, like, the people in Ukraine are being degraded by virtue signaling. I'm not, not going to that. I can't speak for that. But 1812 Overture is Tchaikovsky, who is Russian. And there are actually some that are like, no, 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 we, we shouldn't play his music anymore because of this. It's like, yes, he's Russian, but he's very European. It's like, when you actually consider who he was, I'm saying there were Russian composers that didn't include, did not recognize him as being Russian. He was that much a Western and European composer. And he actually went to study with one of them, um, Vimsky Korsakov. I know he studied with him. He may have studied with others as well. And you can tell, if you listen to some Korsakov, and then you listen to Tchaikovsky's uh, Roman Juliet Fantasy Overture, oh, you can tell the influence there. But there was a group, Korsakov was among them, called the Mighty Five in Russia. And they basically decided, you know what? We need to have a Russian sound. We need to have music that you can tell when you hear it that this is Russian music. And not even just like folk music kind of thing, but you know, this was like the romance era of, uh, of music. Okay? And they wanted a, like, Russian sound, is certainly how you put it today. You probably, you might have used a different uh, word than sound then. But it's like, Tchaikovsky is like, he was basically European in, in his composing. And he also didn't really care much for the Tsars. Which, true, the Tsarist era has, is long since done. What, over a hundred years now? I think we're past a century. Maybe we're at a century. Um, <clears throat> but it's like the 1812 Overture is actually... It, it's funny that um, we in the U.S. use it on, like, July 4th. Because it's like, what it's actually celebrating, what, what the music was composed for, and he didn't want to. As I said, he did not like the Tsar. But he was compelled to do this. It's commemorating the Russian defeat of the French, more specifically Popol Napoleon, in 1812. Okay? So it's very, very unusual that, I mean, I guess it's because of the cannons, and it is a beautiful piece, that we use it but for July 4th, but it's like, it's celebrating a nation that, for, you know, quite a time, has been our adversary in one way or another. And it's celebrating their defeat. Which was really more so the weather's defeat. Russia is not a place that's easy to invade. Not in winter. Um, possibly not even in the summer, but anyway. Celebrating the defeat of the French who have been the longest ally of America. 
It's like they were allied with us in the Revolutionary War. Now, true, they also allied with the Confederacy in the Civil War, but, um... I mean, it's always complicated, and it's also, it's France. They've had so many revolutions, it's hard to keep track. So... Yeah, but it still is. It has nothing to do with America. And if you actually consider what its purpose was, it it's kind of not what you would ever want to play. <laughs> it's just funny. Because as I said, you would still count France as an ally, even with the whole Civil War stuff. It's like, no, 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 you would include them as an ally. Um, but yeah, it's just weird, the, the idea of censoring Tchaikovsky, who was, like, he was Russian by birth, not by art, I guess would be one way to put it. And it's also funny, because, like, he's a, he was, he was gay, he was a homosexual who actually suffered very much because, um, like, look at the history, if you're curious, of Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. It is considered one of his most beautiful, and it is a beautiful, beautiful symphony. He wrote it in, I think, three weeks, which is ridiculous, especially for a Romance-era symphony. Because, it's like, some of those, it's like, no, I spent years on that. That's the kind of thing that you would do in that era for, with symphony. Not like the classical period before it, or Baroque, even. Although, you didn't really have symphonies in Baroque, did you? That's more smaller group. Um... But, um, in three weeks, and it was actually, the, the story behind it is, as I said, he was homosexual, and I see what I need to clean him. Um, but at the time, that really wasn't accepted. So, what he tried to do was, um, you get married, nonetheless. You find a woman that, that would have him, and try to have that normal kind of life because that that there was that expectation and he was he was already famous so him not being married it, I mean like a, that would be a publicist kind of problem I guess would be one way to put it publicist nightmare and he ended up marrying a, a student of his who was already kind of nuts like she was really not mentally all there and the marriage... What is... So the marriage being not entirely authentic... Uh, definitely didn't help her. It didn't help him, because he also had mental issues. He, he, he... I think he did face depression. I mean, it was... He was a very unhappy man. But they end up eventually divorcing, but it was a terrible, terrible ordeal for him, and and she, I mean, oh boy, she was nuts. She, she, she was nuts. If any other woman, maybe, would have been better. Um, but he wrote the fourth, sim his fourth symphony, and the theme to it is supposed to be inevitability. What is this? The nose knows. Achievement. I'm advancing. Okay, I guess it's something here. Um, it's still picking something, and I don't know. Um, but that basically, he it didn't didn't matter what he tried. That that kind of inevitability, he he can't escape it. And you can definitely hear it. I, I don't always hear it when I listen to the symphony. But it, 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 it truly is a beautiful piece. But you can't. There are some spots where you can definitely hear the how the sound is. Like there's a theme that, that cannot escape. That there are other larger themes. That you can't change certain things. It, it's, it truly is beautiful. But it's just so weird. It's like, you're going to censor him? And also, it's like he, I mean, we're talking, he was alive at, you know, 1812, I'm pretty sure. Like, the 1812 Overture, I want to say, was composed not long from, not far from 1812. 
in Tsarist Russia. I mean, it definitely, he definitely was under Tsarist. You know, it was during the time of the Tsar. That might be. Oh, yep, yep, that's what it was. Okay. Oh, man, there's still some. Oh, wait, might be the pun. Yeah. He has. The, his. His music, his legacy has nothing whatsoever to do with what's going on now. And you're censoring him? What the hell? That would be like censoring Beethoven. Oh, because he was German during World War II. And maybe that happened, it would still be wrong. His music is some of the most, is truly beautiful, and he, he really changed the world of music. You're just gonna throw it all out? Just because th there happened to, it was Germany at the time that basically turned towards an evil ideology? Well, its leadership did. Let's be fair, so plenty of the people did not, but many of them also didn't act to stop it, so. There's a lot of people with dirty hands in that, but some dirtier than others. But it still is the whole... Why would you... Why would you censor that? Why would you stifle that? Why would you cancel that? I mean, th these are works of beauty that have... You know, th they will transcend this. They have transcended time already to survive these hundreds of years. Why are you trying to get rid of them now because of somebody's actions, somebody's choices that are horrible, but completely unrelated. That also reminds me of something else that, um, that I saw, and it's like, this is actually a worthwhile debate in some way. So there's, what do you do about open source software? that is um, being used by, hopefully the conflict is actually done and in positive way, let's say, um, that the Ukraine-Russia conflict is done by the time this video comes out. That would be wonderful. What is this thing? Um, I kind of lost the thread of why I was saying that, but you got open source software that some of it is actually used by Russia and by the Russian military. Um, specifically, it, what I was seeing talked about was a linear algebra system that actually supports some Russian design, Russian made processors. They, they were designed and made by Russia so they wouldn't be dependent on um, uh, like, Intel or AMD CPUs, like, Russian doesn't want to be dependent on American companies. That makes sense. We also kind of have laws to avoid that as well. Yeah, there are certain things about where American military, uh, goods can be manufactured. Anyway, the question was, do, for this open source project, was, do we want to, you know, cut that stuff out in protest? And it's like, yeah, we could, but it's an open source project, so all they'd have to do is just work on an older version and put the stuff back in new ones, do their own development to continue. It's like, it wouldn't actually achieve much practically. But, you know, it, it would still you know, send a signal. It's like, yeah, but you'd also be undermining what open source is for your project. So, does it really make sense to do? And personally, I, I think I would be on the side of, no, you don't, there's no point to it, because it's not going to uh, achieve any practical effect. Because it's open source, they can just use an older version from before it got cut out, and they the, the Russian CPU support is cut out, or they could, you know, just develop that in there themselves. I mean, it's... You know, it would be nothing more than, you know, a strongly worded, worded letter, so why not just do the strongly worded letter and get on with it? You know, get get on with life. What up, Mr. Now, that's not to say, you know, there, there are definitely some 
technology groups that are doing things to voice their opposition in action, not just in, in words. I don't know what I'm saying that any of that is wrong. I'm just saying that for specifically for open source, I don't see how that makes sense to to do. I don't see where where that benefit is, how it's actually achieving the goals, the stated goals. And certainly people are free to disagree with me on that. It, it's just practically I. I do not know what just happened there. Um, okay, that, that soil went. You know, it's kind of the whole... Oh, well, not quite. But it's the closest I could think of just now. Um, cutting off your nose to spite your face kind of thing. It's like, yeah, you're doing something, but is it actually something that, that's a positive? So... Like, I, I, I like how, um... Like, what some game developers are doing is they're just, you know, proceeds are going to support in Ukraine. I don't know of any that are going to support in Russia, but let's presume that there are some... Of as well, it's, you know, because I'm, there are people on all sides of it, and all, pe there are also people on all sides that are suffering. Let's, one side might be suffering more than the other, but typically in any war, all sides suffer to some degree. So if there are some that are supporting the Russian people, okay, I'm open-minded enough. Um... And also, I'm anything that to assuage suffering, but I would prioritize a little different. Um, but it's like how some of them, they're doing that, like, uh, the guy behind Gary's mod and Rust, apparently. Because the Russian currency has so dropped in value, he had to jack up the price so that people weren't, you know, taking advantage of the, the lower currency value. But he also is having all the proceeds go to... Uh, I think it's the Ukrainian Red Cross. I don't remember exactly, but it's like, you know, that makes, that that's a more effective uh, action than an open source project trying to cut out uh, code that it's like, I mean, yeah, it might be making a difference, but, well, it might be making a difference currently, but it, the genie's out of the bottle. It's definitely something here. The thing is, this is the... Oh, there we go. That's it. Um, it was inorganic, so the glass makes perfect sense. But that could also have been like a bullet hole. But I've not seen any bullet holes, so wouldn't have Boy, it would be great if this actually is... If this video actually does come out after it's resolved. But it is also one of those, how is it resolved? And it's like, well, I'm not fool enough to just be like, ending a war is always good. Sometimes you do need one side to win. But at least if it's over by now, that means it hasn't escalated to the most terrible possibility. When is this going to come out? This will be in May, I think, right? I don't know. I actually haven't looked. At the schedule to find out. What do you.
I have no idea. There might be something stuck here. I don't think the door can be open. Yeah, so we're just gonna abandon whatever it is over there. And I think this is, well, that might, no, no, it's probably still just making that, which is now gone. It is picking something up. Just based on the 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 noises it's making, the sounds. There's some. We're a piece of glass in here. I don't believe it, but there isn't. I don't know. Let's just move on. Here we go. Here's something. Like I'm pretty good. It's just that one thing in that room. Although I haven't checked the the behind the locked door, the code door. And it's not picking up anything though, so that's good. It is doing the, the that dancing right here, but I, I don't know. I do not know. So let's check this. something. Mm. Okay, it looks like that's it, though. That was a good mate. Could actually be... It's right here. Ah, yeah, right there. Probably from when I was carrying the body out. Yep, that was it. I don't know. It's still finding some. Oh, well, whatever it is, it's further up here, actually. I just remembered something that apparently EA has delayed the Dead Space remake to, to next year, to 2023. Which I'm okay with. Um, and let me explain why. So, Dead Space, the original Dead Space, is a good game. That's a very good game. That's uh, with the whole recommendation categorization thing. That would be, that would be a three, I think. Um, it's been a while since I played it. But I, I think I would give that a 3. So, just solid recommendation. 
two, I would Dead Space two, I'd give a two, two. So it's still a recommendation, but a weaker one. Um, Dead Space three, probably a one. I did not care for that game. I know a lot of other people didn't. A lot of people agree with me. Was I? Anyway. That's actually part of the reason, though, that I'm okay with Dead Space being delayed, because you do not want to screw up a remake of the original, the best of the three, but it's also because Dead Space 2 wasn't terrible for the series. It was different, but it was serviceable for the series. Dead Space 3 hurt the series. Okay, so it's like you don't have much good faith at the moment that it will be handled that that you're gonna do Dead Space Justice. Okay, I think I am done. Um, so, take your time, get it right. Because if you get it wrong, Dead Space is officially dead. That's my fear. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. Um, and I don't want Dead Space to be dead. That's good. In the, Death Space 1 was good. Death Space 2 could have been better, but wasn't bad. So yeah, I, I don't want it to suffer, so go ahead and take your time. Get get that right. Don't take too much time, though. It's like, don't don't make this vapor. Go with that and see how badly I did. Um, depending, I, I, that would be a game I'd buy. I don't know if I could get a you keep for it, but I, I, I could see myself uh, doing that. And I got exceptional up there. I just... Oh, well, that actually was three hours, but 100%. I don't think... I mean, except for looking at the code, I don't know if I've gotten 100% on anything else that was actually, like, that that well done. As in, like, just me. I, I don't think I've achieved that before, so awesome. I'm happy. I am very happy. Alright, um... That's gonna be it. Quit out. And, uh, yeah, I can... I can see you next time. This was 70. This was part 70. I've made 70 of these videos. I don't know how long... How much time that adds up to. Yeah, but certainly past 50 hours. Actually, wait, because I said it was three hours, I'm at uh, 52 and a half hours about. Because the last length I have is 49 and a half. Wow. All right. See you next time.